For old fashioned recipes and your garden that needs a while sipping on Kentucky bourbon. Sit right back in your big red hat, we're taking Rural back from the urban. Listen to the stories with Kentucky proud, share the giggles with all of your friends. We all tuned in. Hi, I'm Joyce. Welcome to Friends Drift In, episode number 10, your source for the farm to table movement in Eastern Kentucky. Today we have Joel Worth, who is a professionally trained chef. He is also a saucier in a yes. formal life. He works for the Pike County Cooperative Extension Service as an assistant. And let me tell you, since the Master Garden at the Master Gardeners meetings, now that we're having dinner, they've improved 200%. <laughs> so I'm really tickled to have Joel here. We're going to go to the Mediterranean today yes. and Italy. Yes. And we're going to take back Certainly. what the Italians took from us, tomatoes and peppers that came from America, but they went overseas yes, and came and on made back. Them better. And made them better. What are we going to do, Joel? All right, first of all, we're going to do, uh, I call this dish a Mediterranean pasta. And when the season is right and you have those beautiful heirloom tomatoes, that's what I, that's what I suggest to use. Right now, we're going to use a, a crushed tomato that's canned because actually that's a better product. So when, it, when it's time to use your fresh tomatoes, what you need to do is you need to do, a, it's called a tomato concasse. And a tomato what? A tomato concasse, <laughs> as they call it in the French term. Or we just call it, if no way, you just call it chopped up tomatoes with the skins <laughs> off it. First thing you want to do is you want to take where the core is and you want to cut that core out. And they do make a little tool, which is called a pooper scooper in the trade which you can just take it and do like that. If you do no more of them, but you're only going to do a few of them, that's all you need to do. And then you, then you turn it around and you make an X on the back. And all you need to do is pop it in boiling water. And you want to pop that in for maybe about a minute, maybe two minutes at the most. So this is exactly the same process you would do if you were canning tomatoes to pull the peel off. Mm -hmm. Is that the, the end product? The, the, yes. That's what we're doing is to get that peel yes. from the tomato. Because the tomato, when you, when you cook with tomato, that's, that makes it bitter when you, cook with the, when you cook with the skin. So we're going to wait that and let's go for a minute. Okay. Let's talk about tomatoes while we're waiting. This is a plum tomato. This is called a plum. San Lorenzo's. Mm -hmm are one of the best tomatoes to grow. It's catalog, seed catalogs are coming out, so you want to look for San Marinzo seeds. They are a meaty tomato. They are um, very plump and plush. They cook down to a wonderful yes. sauce. Um, so the San Marinzo tomatoes is what we want to look for. Um, some other things that come from Italy, while we're waiting, we have uh, radicchio which is like a very, kind of a cabbage. Yes. What yes. would you say about radicchio? It, it's, it's a cross between a cabbage and a lettuce. And in this country, it, it, it's an acquired taste because radicchio is a little, a little on the bitter, bitter side. side but if you have a nice, if you, if you mix it, it's a thing that you don't want to eat by itself. But if you mix it with, with different greens, it really gives that nice little flavor. contrast and depth oh, of yeah. flavor, especially with a good vinaigrette. Okay, so this is done. Now what you want to do is put this in a colander and let it cool. But being that we're only going to have a few minutes, and you can see... It just slips. How this slips. It just slips right off. And then boom. We're ready it's, to go. It's ready to go. And then what you want to do is cut this in half. And then, I'm going to use a little paper towel here is you want to just take it and just take the seeds out of it as much mash as you can. It. You mash it and it takes the majority of the seeds out of it. And then that's it. And then you got it and you're you ready to go. And you chop it. So we chop it up and we got fresh tomatoes for the base of our pasta. When we talk about bases, that's what a saucier chef mm -hmm. does is make bases. Yep. So you did chicken stock, you did beef stock, all from scratch. Yes, uh, chicken stock, beef stock, fish stock, and I also did a lobster stock when I used to do my lobster Oh. <laughs> yeah, 
In a previous life, you cooked in Atlantic City. Yes. So you kind of take a roll of the dice? Yes, <laughs> yes. And it was a roll of the dice, and it was kind of interesting cooking. You got to see how the other half lives, as they say. <laughs> and I remember I had a client, never forget his name, Ned Randall, and he had what they call un... un he had comp dollars that could just he could just spend as much money as right. he wanted. He would come in, and anything that man wanted, he uh, he got. And I took care of him, and he took care of me. All right. <laughs> so that's the tomato concasse. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add this with the, with our rest of our tomatoes. Okay. Right here. Back. And the other thing I want to show you is another way to, to another way to peel garlic. This is so cool because I've never seen anybody do it quite this way and I'm always looking for new things. Now, you garlic do, you know, you do peel of garlic here. and if fresh. you all have fresh garlic, if you have a meat mallet, okay, and I had to buy one of these recently because I did a, I did a stuffed chicken dish at home for Thanksgiving. So I had to buy one of these and my wife looked at me and said, Joel, you bought another kitchen gadget. What are you going to do with this? I said, we'll never use that. And I looked at her and said, yeah, I'm going to need it when I want to do Parmesan's and I want to do other meats. And I said, also, I said, it's a great way to do garlic. And she looked at me and said, what do you mean? So I did the garlic thing. And all you have to do is you take the flat end right here and you just go a couple taps and voila. You have whole peeled garlic. Peeled garlic that fast. And I mean, I sit and I'll peal with the knife and it now takes you do so it with long. the knives and you can you crush do that, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but if you just a couple just taps, do as good. No, you do a couple it does taps, much easier with the uh, and the then meat boom, cleaver. you have peeled garlic. Y'all can find garlic um, in bins to get fresh garlic. They're usually in the bins in the produce section at Food City and, mm -hmm. and local grocery stores. But fresh garlic is always, always better. better than than, than canned. The, yes. Some. Yes. All right. Okay. Well, now what go, what is going to go in this pasta extravaganza? Okay, in this pasta dish, we are going to use beef today. And one thing great about this dish, it's a it's a pasta dish, and you can use beef, you can use chicken, you can use seafood, you or you can do tofu, tofu, <laughs> or, or just plain vegetarian, just use vegetables. And today we're going to use uh, portobello mushrooms. We're going to use onions, garlic. Zucchini, yellow squash, fresh baby spinach, which I picked this morning down at the Extension Center. And here's my little plug. Make sure you all, if you don't grow your own, if you don't have your own gardens, Wednesdays and, Wednesdays and Saturdays, probably at the end of March, we're going to have our farmer's market. Wow. You get some beautiful vegetables there, and they're all locally grown. So, and fresh herbs, okay. and with the beef. Now, if you're going to use beef, you want to slice it very very thin on an angle and you want to marinate it for about 30 minutes to an hour and the best marinade as far as I'm concerned is soy sauce because mm -hmm. yep. the soy use, sauce uh, we use Matt Jamie's soy sauce because Matt's a Kentucky proud guy that's it and it's, yep, and it's made here right right it's made in Louisville so there you go and that's a cooking fallacy is when people they go, oh, I'm going to marinate it in Italian dressing. It's going to be tender and all that, which is not. It actually doesn't tenderize it at all. But if you do soy sauce, it's the salt and the soy that makes that beef or chicken nice and tender. Now, seafood, you don't have to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to heat our pan. And this is a combination wok combination wok fry pan as you can see it's flat on the bottom it's got the round edges this is the thing I cook with most of the time I mean this is a great because you have the sides that you can put things up and you got the flat for when you want to saute or if you want to pan fry so we're just going to put that on the stove and we're going to use Georgia olive oil. Georgia olive oil, because prior here, I lived in Georgia for 22 years, so I'm kind of fond of Georgia. This is a big deal. Um, Italy is, of course, where yes. most of the yes. olives are grown yes. commercially. And Spain, yes. And this, this has just started. They're doing, you've heard of small batch bourbon. This yes. is small batch, batch olive oil. oil, and they're growing it in Georgia. It's one of the first mm -hmm. times that we've ever grown it on this, this country. Yes. And they used to do that way back. Yeah, uh, before the Civil War, and we got away from it, and now they're starting to to come back. So everything old is new again. And if you would, oh, let me do right here. I'm sorry, I need to get my little bit of beef. 
because I cooked most of it, but I just wanted to see and show you how thin this beef is. There you go. And this is how, when you go to Chinese restaurants, they don't use expensive beef. But you notice how that beef is usually just melts so, in your mouth? Yes. Because they marinate it in soy. And that's the best marinade you want. So we're going to take a little bit of olive oil, put it in the pan. And that pan's probably already good and hot. And we're just now gonna, how do you know if it's hot or not? Well, if you can, you can just take one little piece of beef and you hear it sizzle. Uh, that, hear the sizzle. Y'all know how I feel about sizzle. How do you feel about sizzle? <laughs> I like it all when we right, sizzle. All right, all right. Then we're in business. Oh, man, that smells good already. Yep, and you can smell. And the thing about it is you don't have to add any salt, any seasonings, just plain soy sauce. That's all you need. So you're going to, and the great thing about this pan is when you, you know, you know, like, well, you can tell I'm a chef because I got the flipping action, but when it flips, it, you, you got the size it curls up to. So you're not going to do it in a regular frying pan if you do that. Most of the time it goes on the floor. But with one of these wok type fry pans, it works really, really good. So while the rest of this is cooking, Joyce, let's get the pasta over. And well, we're using a whole wheat pasta today. This is this is locally available at Food City, Hogston Mill. They're known for their whole wheat, and um, I think that whole wheat pasta has got a little more depth of uh -huh. flavor and uh, makes it a whole lot more interesting than just the plain yes, white. Yes, and not only that, it's not a wasted it's not a wasted carb. Right, right. You're getting and your vitamins. The one thing you want to do when you cook pasta is you always want to salt your water because that'll give you the flavor in the pasta. About how much salt did you put in there? Oh, uh, I, I always have trouble with salt. I put a good, like, a good two pinches. Okay. And if you're not sure, you can always taste a little bit of the water if it's got that nice salty flavor because that'll absorb in the pasta. And if you don't do that, your pasta is kind of bland. So, our meat's already cooked. Like behind you. So, I, I, I cooked a little bit earlier. And we're going to go with a little bit more olive oil. And then we're going to start our veggies. And the first thing you want to do is you want to add, this is fresh garlic and fresh uh, onions. So you want to add that and get that going. And you can also do, we got yellow peppers and we got uh, orange peppers. But you can use green peppers, you can use red peppers, you can use any kind of pepper you want. Yeah, actually, it's any good vegetable. You can add broccoli to this, green beans. Green beans are great in this. Yep. Whole beans particularly are um, Italian. What about canini beans? Could we use canini beans? Yeah, yeah, you can use any kind of bean you want. If you want to do vegetarian, you can use a dry bean. You can use... Now we're doing the zucchini. zucchini. You all know zucchini. We start, you can start your plants indoors about March. I like Black Beauty zucchini is one of my favorites. Then the yellow, for the yellow squash, I like um, yellow prolific straight neck. And they are a short season. They only take about, once you put them in the ground, you're gonna have zucchini in about 30 days. And if you put out more than six or eight plants, so will your neighbors <laughs> have lots of zucchini. And that's okay. You can yeah, zucchini is a great. You can make zucchini bread. You can put it in anything. Omelets. And we're just going to cook all these veggies up for a minute. When we talk about Italy, you don't really think of Appalachia being part of the Italian culture. But back in about the 1920s, uh, we had a great influx of. Italian immigrants, they came here with the coal mines and the railroads, and they were stonemasons. So they didn't work as much in the mines as they built a lot of uh, structures. The Pine Mountain Settlement School, uh, the chapel there was built by Italian stonemasons. And uh, you will find on Johns Creek that there are some heirloom tomato seeds that came from Italy. And uh, I suspect that they came as the stonemasons came through the area. Um, practicing their trade. That's it. And that, while she mushrooms, was talking, I was just adding some mushrooms. You snuck the mushrooms in on me. I You're did. You're too fast. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll when slow down. When you buy a mushroom, these are portobellos. A portobello, you know, when you look, you want to see that it's got a very even 
this is what they call gills, just like gills in a, uh, for a fish. You want to see that it's pretty and, and, and even and not distraught on the bottom. And when you wash these, you want to just take a, a very lightly damp paper towel and just barely wipe because this will absorb all the water. Yes, yeah, so very water absorbent. And, and don't, you don't want that. That's not a good thing. So you the, just barely wipe them down. And the best way to, uh, to chop these is, because if you're going to do this, it's going to be really big, so you want to cut it in half, and you just take it like this. Fancy. But the main thing is when you chop, and this is the main thing I tell people, you see where my fingers are. My fingers aren't out like this. If your fingers are out like this, you're going to cut yourself. So <laughs> if you remember <laughs> to do this right here, this actually has a guide. And you can get as thick as you want, or you can get as thin as you want. I mean, I can make these things paper thin. Or you can make them big. But when you do this, and you go like that, you're going to cut, eventually you're going to cut yourself. But if you use this, if you, if you bend your fingers back, and use that as a guide, you're not going to cut yourself. Safety in the kitchen. Okay, so let's get back to what we're doing. Now, why do we wait and do the, the, the sequence that we added the vegetables? I mean, when you think about, you know, mushrooms are softer, so is it because they cook quicker? Yep. Yes, they cook quicker. And your, your peppers take a little bit longer. Okay, the next thing we're going to add is we're going to add, I have some fresh parsley. Italian parsley. This is a flat leaf parsley. This is what it looks like before we cut it. And then this some, is, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. And this is Italian flat leaf parsley. It came from Kathy Raymar. She grows it up in her garden up uh, on the college. Let's talk a little bit about the college. How did you come to Pikeville How from did I New come Jersey? To Pikeville? Well, actually, New Jersey via Georgia is my wife. Excuse me, i got to stir my pasta because <laughs> you know it's Italians. <laughs> my wife is a college professor, and she teaches, she teaches uh, English now at the University of Pikeville. And we were in Georgia, and she said, you know what? I need to change the pace. And she looked at me and said, can I put some feelers out? And she put some feelers out from around the country. And the University of Pikeville said, we're interested in you. So we came to Pikeville and said, why not? Because I kind of like the mountains. It's cool. It's you cool know? to be a hillbilly. Yeah. And I'm teaching you. It's we're going cool. to break you in right, y'all. Well, you know, part of my, uh, you know, I'm 50% Italian, and the other half of me is 50% is piney. And, and, and pineys are people that live in the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. And that's just a northern, that's just a Yankee version of a redneck, okay? <laughs> we just don't get the rednecks up there. So. So what next? We're going to put our, we're going to put our herbs parsley. in. Parsley. Our parsley and our basil. we got some fresh we basil, got too. Fresh. Did you hit that already cut or you want it's to already, pull no, the it's already cut. Okay. It's already cut in there. So if you want to show them a piece of, and that basil smells so good. This is what a basil leaf looks like. Now, I regret to tell you that basil doesn't keep well in the winter. You can't really grow it. It's very cold sensitive. Um, basil is a part of the mint family. When you know that it's the mint because it has the stem, and I doubt, I don't know whether you can pick it up, but mint family always has a square stem. But the thing about basil, anytime you're working with basil or mint, you usually chef. Mm -hmm. You should be tearing it and not yes. chopping it because yes. it will turn black, right? Yes, it will. Unless if you're going to chop it, you need to use it fresh right away. Oh, man, and the only thing, smells, smells oh, like yes, summer. It is. And the, and, the, and the difference between, the one thing about the difference between basil and mint, even though it's in the mint family, where mint is a perennial, basil, basil is an is annual. Not. So if you want to grow it in the wintertime, you either got to do it in a greenhouse or a tunnel or in the house. Right. So our pasta is almost ready. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit this with a little bit of wine because you, you got to. You got to have wine. <laughs> so we're going to hit this with a little bit of wine, and then we're going to let that reduce. And the thing is with the wine is you can uh, use a little bit. You can use a lot. It all depends. But if you use, if you use a lot of wine, you're going to let it reduce down. I guess in this dish, it was maybe about a quarter you're, you're of a moving, cup. You're removing most of the alcohol. Yes, Basically, yes. you're just getting the essence yes, of the grape. and the flavor. So we're going to let this reduce a little bit. And the next thing we're going to add is we're going to add our tomatoes. And We talked about this. 
it's much better to grow your own tomatoes, but Food City does have the San Lorenzo available. They're a little bit pricey, but That's if you okay. really want the flavor, look for this label, San Lorenzo, and you will have some of the best eaten tomatoes that God put on this earth. Took them over to Italy, brought them back. That's it. That's it. <laughs> we love it. I often want to do, there's a, uh, you know, Italy and, and southern Spain, there is a town in southern Spain that they have this annual tomato festival. And Where they throw the tomatoes? Yes. Yes, I've seen yes, that on TV. I would, just, I would love, you know, I, and I know it's just like, oh my God, look what you're doing all the tomatoes. But when you see them, it just looks so much fun. It looks to me a lot funner than the running of the bulls. I don't know. I'd much rather have tomato stone than I mean, have a bull chase me. But that's just, that's just me. I don't know. I'm ready. <laughs> I just want to... Taste my pasta here real quick. We're going to put it over here in the sink. Get on screen to do that. They can't see you over oh. there. Tell, tell me how you're tasting your pasta. How you know, what we call it, al dente? Al dente, you want a little, little bit of crunch. And you can tell that pasta is just about there. So It's not soft, y'all. It's kind of... It's got a little crunch to it. chewy. And al dente means to the tooth. Yes. So, so just kind of... Just a little chewy, and you don't want to overcook pasta because it gets soggy, and then it won't take up the flavors, uh -huh. the other flavors of the vegetables. So now and we're going to add our tomatoes to this, and we're going to cook this a little bit longer. So pretty. Yes, oh, and man. as you can see, look how beautiful that looks. You got all the colors, and the last thing we're going to add is the beef. I'm going to add spinach and a little bit of heavy cream. To give it that oh while that's cooking i'm going to dump this pasta because we don't want to overcook, overcook it. it right while joel is draining the pasta i want to talk to you a minute about lemons lemons come from the mediterranean and i'm very fortunate that a friend of mine sent me some from arizona and let me tell you fresh lemons smell so good and to make your own we're going to make your own uh, homemade soda today so what we're doing is we're adding simple syrup. You've all seen me do simple syrup before. It's two parts sugar, two parts water. Just kind of cook it off. Some fresh squeezed lemon juice. And then it wouldn't be Italy That's right, if we didn't have mineral, mineral water. water. And they call it mineral water with gas over there. And mineral water without gas would be what, Perrier? Just, just, no, that would just be a plain bottled water. But this is mineral water available locally. This particular one um, is available at Food City, so it's nothing fancy. No big deal. Easy to do and so refreshing. So you about ready to plate yes, up? Yes, we're going to be ready. The best thing we have to finish we have to do is we add a little bit of spinach to the end. Okay. Because you want to get that nice green color. Okay. Then you want to add your beef. See, what's great, like I said, what's great about these pans is you can flip it and it doesn't so go all beautiful. over the place. So beautiful. And then you just want to finish it with a little bit of heavy cream. Now, you don't have to use the cream if you're watching your, you know, if you're watching your waistline or if you're high cholesterol, but the cream just gives it a nice little... <laughs> it makes it silky on the palate. Yes. And then the last thing you want to do, as all good chefs do, is you want to... Because we need a little bit of salt. And a little bit of pepper. Okay, and now we're going to do another little twist. And then now we are ready to plate. All right, I'm going to come behind you and get that pasta. Okay. And you're going to put it in this bowl, right? Yep, just put some in that bowl. I'm not going to put it all in there because you're not going to have room. Mm -hmm. And then you want to add your, you want to add this beautiful little dish all right the vegetables. here. vegetables. And then you just want to toss it. Toss it. You don't toss it on the ceiling? Well, we can do that, but you know, I don't want to get, you know, this is too good to waste. <laughs> All right, you we'll know, plate it up. If I had my dog here, starving. I'd do it because, you know, she'd be, uh, she'd be on it. Okay, so. Plate that up and tell me a little bit about the antipasta okay, plate. Antipasta 
is uh, it's, it's a first course in Italy. And what does it include? Olives. It includes olives. This has uh, marinated artichokes. artichokes. It also has marinated okra. My okra grown in yes, my garden. Yes, and different types of olives and some local, locally grown capers. Okay, and how to finish this off is we have some Parmesan cheese. Because everything's better with some fresh grated Parmesan cheese. And we are ready to enjoy. Let's make this out of the way. Put this here. Let's take a bite. All right, get over here. Hope it's okay. Oh. All right, what about me? What about me? <laughs> There's nothing not bad. <laughs> Don't save I... it all for yourself. Oh, fresh vegetables. Tastes like fresh summer. Herbs. We've got this wonderful homemade fresh drink. lemon soda. And you know what we say on Friends Drift In. Share the giggles. There you go.